G'day guys, in this episode we're going to have a look at a few mods. I have bought some modding products from BadAd84 on Assembler Games, one awesome dude. So I'll start with the Mega CD Universal BIOS. So if I power it up now, there's the PAL Mega CD intro screen. And if I try to switch this on in a different region, just toggle the switches over and get this. Yep, yeah, done work. So, to the modding table. I have the Mega CD open. You are the juicy innards. That is the sucker we're going to pull out. That's the BIOS. This is what we're going to replace it with. I have the old BIOS chip removed. Ta da! It's still got a couple of holes here that I need to suck the solder out of, but other than that, it's ready to go. And it's in. Looking good. Still a bit of. Put a little solder on those uh, pins there. Should be right. Let's test it. Got it set up very precariously. No lid. Let's see what happens. Moment of truth. Got it set to 50 hertz and English looking good well it's not on fire so let's turn this off set it to 60 Hertz Japanese Hooray! Region free Mega CD in 60 or 50 hertz. Awesome! Alright, on to the next mod. That last mod was a pretty much straightforward mod of just pulling out one chip and sticking in a different chip, so I didn't film the, uh, the whole process of it and that. This one's a bit more interesting. This one is a 50 slash 60 hertz switchless mod for the Saturn. So I uh, thought I'd document the process of installing this one since it's a little bit more a little bit more interesting. Let's go. Alright, now at the top off, let's rip this sucker apart. You can see there that I've got the uh, Universal BIOS installed. So I don't need to install the uh, region switch, which is kind of cool. I just need to switch 50, 60 hertz. So, what do we need to do that? There's a trace that needs to be cut down here. Uh, just going from the reset switch into the little capacitor there, uh, C122. Uh, there's a trace up here somewhere uh, that needs to be cut uh, and that's where we solder on the wire that goes to the uh, PIC microcontroller and finally we remove the LED down here and replace that with a two color LED so uh, let's do it the trace we need to cut for 50 or 60 Hertz is just there to the left of that text that says TP103 you can see there's a you can see there's a trace here with two little pads along it there we just need to cut that trace solder a wire to it all 
hopefully you can see it there. We can double check that that's been cut. With the, uh, with the help of our trusty multimeter. Nothing. Yep, looks like it's cut. Now to do some soldering. Yep. Where are we? That looks good, don't know how well you can see it there. Attach it like that and we're done. So on the top side we need to cut the line that connects the reset button to the uh, CPU. I need to do this a bit closer to my face. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. But just between C122 and the reset button there I've cut that trace. So the, uh, the next step we want to do is attach a little bit of wire uh, to the top side of that resistor and to this side of the reset switch. Alright, so now we have the point that tells the uh, system what frequency to use, the reset button and the reset uh, point that goes back to the CPU. Uh, finally, we just need to pick up some power. So uh, we can get power from the uh, power header, which is where the power comes in from the power supply to provide power to the motherboard power. Power. Uh, <clears throat> just using the little spaces under here. You get ground from that first one and 5 volts from that third one. Alright, we have power. Now to get the chip and connect it up for a test. Okay, so here's the pick. Here's our two color LED, our filter cap, and dropper resistors for the LED. This is a pick 16 f 630 this has already been flashed uh, with the switchless mod software. Let's go ahead and throw it together. Uh, so we're going to go with, uh, with a sort of dead bug construction, uh, meaning we're just going to put the chip directly onto the motherboard top down, glue it in place, uh, and just have all the wires coming directly into the pins uh, as required. So, the first thing we'll install is the uh, filter capacitor. trim the legs and that's done. The next thing we'll do is attach resistors to pins 5 and 6. These will be the dropper resistors to power the two elements of the uh, LED. Now just to test I'll solder the LED directly onto the LEDs here. Um, when I go to install it into the system, um, we'll obviously connect it up with some wires so that this can be mounted where the uh, original power LED went. This is connected to ground. Okay, let's uh, grab the satin, put this all together and see if she works. I just noticed that I goofed and uh, attached the LEDs to the wrong pins because I was looking at the chip upside down. Oops. Alrighty, here's the uh, mod 
sort of half assembled. It's soldered onto the motherboard in the right places. It's got power coming to it from the power supply over there. The LEDs are soldered to the, uh, the PIC controller there and the ground pin of the LED I've just picked a random ground point there to attach it to for now just so that we can verify that it works then I'll make it all nice put it back together and go from there let's test it all right LED here reset button down here let's get some power The system power LED's on, this one's green. Now let's hit quick reset. We get nothing, that's to be expected because it's just going to reset the system normally. Now let's hold it down. Now that LED is toggling between green and red. Now I'm not sure which way around the LED has been connected so if it blinks fast when I let go of the button it's supposed to be 60 Hz and if it blinks slow then it's 50 Hz so let's let it go when the button, when the LED is red. Slow blinking, oh and it stays red, cool. So the system is in 50 Hz mode. If we try it again, let it go when it's green. That was a fast blink, so the system is in 60 hertz. Uh, and the Saturn doesn't actually reboot when we do this, so we can do this on the fly. Um, but this looks good, the system's sort of powered up and giving us all the right signals, so let's put it back together, connect it to the TV, and see if it does what it says on the box. Just thought I'd uh, quickly show this thing installed before I put the lid on and we go over and see if it does what it should do. I've uh, epoxied the two color LED in place of the normal green one. Installed the pick chip uh, uh, on its back, just epoxied to the top of another chip there. And I made sure that it was in the right, um, in the right sort of space, uh, so that it was in that raised bit over there on the right of the RF shield. So it should be lots of room for it. Let's put it together. Uh, I think that's it. I think I was missing one screw from here. That's okay. Trying to plug it in and test it. Sorry about the flickering. Alright, so uh... This is in 60 hertz mode. If we hold down reset, toggle over to 50, that's gone down to 50. Move again, back up to 60. So it's working. Awesome. Yeah, it's a little bit hard to see on the camera, I guess, but the, uh, the picture actually gets a bit smaller this way. Um, one goes from 60 to 50, so yeah, good enough for me. On to the next mod. All right, next mod. Um, I received um, a Amiga CD32 uh, recently and uh, it came without controllers. So uh, what I plan to do is use this dodgy, no name brand Mega Drive controller, which actually isn't too bad. Uh, and turn it into a CD32 controller. Now I found the uh, schematics online. If you want to check those out for yourselves, I'll put the link in the description. So I went ahead and built that schematic up on breadboard. Ta -da! That's a shift register, 
uh, and a non-inverting three-state buffer, I think. don't remember the exact part number, but anyway. Um, I've added some LEDs just so that I can see the signals as they as they come in and that should be that should work if I wire that up and plug it into the CD32 I should be able to ground the uh, inside of these uh, resistors and a couple of those over there uh, and push the buttons uh, so if I grab my little uh, wire and uh, let's see how I can do this. Touch it to the uh, touch it to the uh, high side of that resistor. There, you can see the uh, the flipper working. Other resistor, the flipper. I think we're in business. I think this works really well. Let's. Crack this controller open. Ah, oh, look how easy that was. These uh, solder joints here, very crudely done. But, if I count the wires out here, three, six, nine, there are nine wires, which means that I can access all of the pins of the plug, which is exactly what I need. So, uh, this should be doable. We can uh, cut some traces and ignore the glob top thing there. Go uh, up, down, left, right, color, 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 left and right, and uh, yeah, next and uh, shoulder buttons, and start and whatever else there is. Okay, I started work on the uh, circuit board inside this uh, controller. And, uh, well, I made a bit of a screw up there and uh, cut those traces, thinking they were just for the auto fire and that I wouldn't use them, but it turned out that that would be an awesome place uh, to solder onto. So I had to repair those traces. Silly me, but I did cut all the traces going in and out of that uh, glop top. Just sort of glue the chips on their backs directly to the PCB. It you know, uses the least amount of space that way. Uh, and there isn't a whole lot of room under here. Um, the, the back uh, sits quite close to the PCB, so that'll be good. Well, better get back to it. Well, there are definitely signs of life. The uh, clock LED is flashing. I don't know how well you can see that. And when I hit one of the uh, shoulder buttons, which I've put up here, then he jumps. Success. Now I put it all together and make it all nice and pretty. Okay. Moment of truth. Okay. Well. The uh, LED is doing its job. Yep. But, uh, Ray.
It works. Ah, uh, yeah, this is pretty awkward. I'm not going to do very well. Okay. Ah, but you get the idea. It's nice and responsive. So, uh, there you go. DIY controller. Well, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this uh, video covering a bunch of different mods that I've done uh, over the past few weeks. So uh, remember to uh, tell your friends. Thanks for subscribing and catch you next time.